It's not the best of weather today, but hey, I'm not in a normal spot. This is Ketchikan, Alaska. It's in the southeastern part of Alaska. Now Ketchikan was a, a gold mining fishing town in the 19th century and since then it's grown slowly it's on a slope it's on a mountainside and you pretty much have to to fly in or take a boat in there aren't many roads that come here the salmon capital of the world you can see someone was panning for gold right there here's downtown ketchikan the stream runs through it out into the ocean, but this is a cool little area. So along this river here that I was just showing you guys, this is actually the red light district back in the day. This is where all the prostitutes were. And every one of these houses up and down this uh, creek where the salmon would stream upstream uh, is also filled with all sorts of nighttime pleasures found a cool store that has the world's third largest matrix opal. It's worth as much as a house, about a quarter million dollars. And it's the size of my head. <laughs> and check it out up close, it's beautiful. All the carrots. That's that creek, and, that, and that's an old prostitute house. And there's the ship out there. Little tiny boat. Hello, little boaty boat. Welcome to the Ketchikan Totem Pole Heritage Museum. I learned a lot about totem poles. I always thought of them as like super old, and while I'm sure there were a bunch way back in the day, apparently they don't last very long. Who would have thunk it, right? It's just painted wood. So they only last about 50 years outside max. So they've got some really old ones from the heyday, from the golden age of totem poles, which was actually around 1860, and it only lasted for about 40, 50 years. That's when they were the most prevalent. So they got a bunch of really old ones dating back about 160 years, and the paint's all faded off. Some of them have been restored. Let's go inside and check them out, all the different old totem poles. It really surprises me that the most of them were only in 1860. It feels like over time, you just think of thousands and thousands and thousands of totem poles, but I guess they're just logs. So once you can escape the tourist trap and go off the beaten path, you start getting into a little bit more of what Alaska truly is, which is of course the nature aspect. Look, there's a salmon jumping upstream. Look, it's a salmon swimming upstream. There are literally like five or six huge cruise ships, ours being of course the biggest right here, the Norwegian Joy, all lined up. They're so big you can only see three right now, but this town literally floods with over 10,000 people every weekend. It's absolutely insane. It's a tiny town too. Whew. You gotta get out there to really see the nature because there's just people everywhere in this little downtown area even though it's crappy outside. This one's got a shopping cart handle. It's got a spoiler deck that you can like literally chill inside of. It's like a race car.
cheeseburger! Not the best day for weather around these parts in Ketchikan today, but I think I got the perfect souvenir, which is an Alaska hat, otherwise known as a rain hat. Apparently they get 200 inches of rain here every year, which is a heck of a lot. Aside from all the like normal touristy stuff, it was nice to get out into nature a little bit and to see the creek and to hike up a little hill, put things into perspective. I was talking to a guy, a local here, and he said that they put out a little newspaper that tells them each day how many tourists are coming. So they could have a Wednesday that gets 16,000 people. So their season is from like March to September. And today, apparently, in the newspaper, it says there's 11,000 people coming in and invading this town. That's insane. On to the next Alaskan city.